Ah. So what have we got today? Today we're going to talk about whether or not you should rent lenses and why. Let's focus on that. Yeah, that guy should have fucked up. So, uh, hey everybody, welcome to After Chat. This will be episode 21. I only know that because I edited episode 20 last night to put it up this morning. Otherwise, I lose track because I now do it by weeks instead of by days. Or by, ep I keep the episode numbers, but I do the fault bouldering by weeks. Uh, today, we are here to talk about uh, renting lenses. Mm -hmm. Recently, uh, was what, three, four weeks ago? Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, because it was, uh, I was going out to the uh, Scientific Summer Solstice Music Festival for the weekend, uh, going out and shooting there. I've got all those pictures up online now. Mm -hmm. um, and I decided I wanted to uh, take a fisheye lens with me. I don't own a fisheye lens, so it was, it was an opportunity to uh, work with borrow lenses. Who would make an awesome sponsor? Mm -hmm. So for us, borrow lenses is about an hour away. Yep, which, which is nice. Yep, which in my case was on the way to the festival. Just about. So that's I same. think it was like five minutes out of my way to get off the highway and go see them up in Waltham. Same so. for me. I recently this week rented a Nikon TC E3, whatever they call it, the the two X teleconverter, the version new one. three, the version three new one. One of the things I love about these guys is I had placed my order originally for the um, Sigma 8.5 inch, or 8.5, 8.5 millimeter fisheye. And then when I got there, I said, you know what? Can I get the Canon 8 to 15 instead? And they're like, yeah, no problem. So they just pulled it right out, and I was like, set. So they, they, they're they very, very easy to work with. Yeah, that's the one thing about them is that their policies are very good. You read how they... All of the return damage policies, the equipment pickup, and all anything that they do is very open and kind of friendly and practically minded, and not just some like big corporation that's going to screw you out of stuff whenever possible. They'll do everything they can to make it work in your favor. Oh yeah, actually, as I was driving back home from the festival, because uh, I get the studio email on my on my phone, I actually got an email from them that said, "Hey, do you want to keep it for an extra day? It's not a problem." I was like, no, I'm driving right past you guys again. I'm going to drop it off. I rented mine for a week just because it wasn't much more expensive than the, the three days or whatever I needed it. And so I kept it extra. Hey, yeah, it's nice. It's a nice service to have nearby. Hunt, our local camera store, is going to start partnering with, is it Lens Rentals? Lens Rentals is the other big one. Uh, it's either, is it Lens Rentals or is it, there's one other bigger one. So whichever. Uh, the two I know are Borrow and Lens rentals. There's there's another one. I think a third, pretty big right. one that hunts. You can go pick up to hunts and pick up your gear there, return it there. I guess in Providence where your store is. They were just getting the system in while I was there a couple weeks ago. So oh, that might... cool. Yeah, because I, I was actually um, going to suggest to the borrow lenses people because I want to go up there again and get some more stuff. That because they that's what they do. They part. We, other than in San Francisco and Boston where they have their two East and West Coast headquarters, they partner with camera stores all over the country to carry extra to carry the lenses or they'll ship the lenses to the store so they don't have to ship them to you mm -hmm. things like that and, but even if oh, it's yeah. just like the one in Providence or just the one up in Maine yeah well so before you... that uh, Hunts had a preferred rental company it was some weird one that was bad and I think now they're moving up to lens rentals I, I'm pretty sure it is all right yeah we'll have to check with Paul when we get in there yeah again. I'll have to see the, the, the rep the representative was in there talking to him about it at the time oh cool I rented my piece of equipment because I was going camping I own a 70 to 200 2.8 and I really rented this just to test it there was nothing in particular I thought I was going to use it for camping there was maybe a chance of some bird stuff that we had seen the year before like falcons up on a dam somewhere but I mainly paid the 45 dollars to test out a piece of equipment that costs five hundred and fifty dollars yep. to see if it's something in the future that'd be valuable to purchase just full retail well what amuses me about about that is if i had asked you three months ago about renting lenses or renting equipment 
you would have told me, yeah, no, don't do it. Well, I mean, renting anything meaningful that you're going to need to purchase in the future is kind of dumb. If you're an event photographer and you need a 1424 for your next event and you're going to spend $500 to rent it, if you can at all purchase that piece of glass, you're much better off doing it. If it's just out of your price range or it's not something you're sure you're going to use, yeah, it's absolutely worth renting stuff. Yeah, because that's why I rented the fisheye because I was like, I don't, I don't know if I'm ever going to use this thing. Yeah. So I was like, I just wanted to have it because one shot, there was one specific shot that they asked me to get uh, when, I, you know, when, they, when they invited me up to come shoot. And that was, can you get a shot of the crowd during while this one particular band is playing because the crowd gets really riled up? And I was like, yeah, I can do that. And my original plan was just to shoot it on the 2470 and just, I was like, that would have been fine. And I did take that shot on the 2470 and then I put the fisheye on and it looked significantly better. Like it was one of those, just kind of those weird cases where the fisheye actually does look better because you're not looking for any one thing. You want the whole abstract. And what's really cool about the, uh, the Canon fisheye, 190 degree viewing angle. It actually sees be behind itself. So like I usually like have an arm out when I'm shooting to kind of leverage. I had to get used to shooting like this. You didn't know you're supposed to keep your arms in? I never keep my arms you're, in. I always got it's one It's like out. a stop of difference. Yeah. It's like a full stop of motion. There's, that's, yeah. a, that's a um, digital rev made fun of that. I know. What the hell? No, no I, I, well, I'm usually like, I'm usually pretty. Yeah, I'm usually like, up. like, I'm usually like this, but with the fisheye, I was kind of like, I, I didn't know where to put this arm because I'm usually holding the lens with it. It's so short, you had nowhere to hold it. So I was kind of going out like this just to try and I was like, what the? And then I realized I had to like basically like one hand it once I had it dialed in and just be like, because it could see behind itself. It was funny. I I really need to run the Nikon fourteen to twenty four for a while, because I don't have experience with a good wide angle lens really yep. on a full frame sensor, which the fourteen twenty four is one of the best wide angle lenses made. Really, it's there's not a lot to improve on it. That's one of the things they sell a fourteen prime, which is also good. But the 1424 needs to be in my backpack, basically. Yeah, I don't That's have a, a 14 in the Canon ecosystem, but they did just release a new uh, wide angle. That's 1635 one of the... The 1635 uh, four, uh, F4, mm. which fills the gap between the 1635 2.8 and the 1750 2.4. Uh, okay. It fills the price gap, I should say, yeah. than anything else. And really, on a wide angle, you're not really going to shoot 2.8 all the time. No. So. I, the 16 35 thing is kind of weird to me. Yeah. Like, I don't fully get what most of that range is for. I don't know. I'm going to talk about it tomorrow in the news because I'm going to have the press release in tomorrow's news notes. Oh, cool. But. So I'm going to rent that just to play with it. That's my next one. Yeah. Rental. I, I need a fourteen twenty four bad enough. I almost stole one from someone not paying attention. Would have deserved it, really. Yeah. He was, you know, thirty feet from his bag, looking the other way, with it just kind of perched on top in a convention space. It's not not really bright. It has a very unique lens cap. The, the cap for a fourteen twenty four is a big metal thing. It's not like a normal lens cap because it has wow. the, has this big curved bell front. It's like well. I need one of those. Those oh, are two thousand dollars. Well, it was kind of cool. The the lens cap on the on the the eight fifteen fisheye is like we like came out and up and it was like all squared off. Hmm. And it had the you actually had to press the two clips to turn it. This one's just a because you, you could it's a pressure you, fit. It just kind of sits on top. I don't know. This had the clips that go. You actually had to press it. It was almost like a uh, like a, 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 a medicine bottle where you had to take it and turn it. But you could leave the lens hood on. And put the cap over it. Like it was okay. designed to fit around the lens hood. That's cool. So that was kind of neat. I played with a, a 55 to 200, a low, like 35 to 56 uh, Nikon. And the bayonet, the hood, the hood didn't clip in like the hoods clip in usually. It was, um, it had like a bayonet mount. So you, you depress it and you could reverse it, put it on, and it would still spin. It was just huh. like a little clip. So it was still free spinning, even though when it was on properly, because it was just a round hood. Huh. That was kind of weird. It was That's cool. kind of weird. I mean, I've seen those round hoods. I've never actually played with one. Yeah, it just, it still will spin. Huh. But yeah, I, I mean, I'm happy I rented my thing, even though most of the stuff I took was test equipment, test shots with a 2X teleconverter. I'm surprised with the results. Because usually a 2X teleconverter, you lose so much. 
And that's, I wanted to test myself how much people were complaining about the loss of sharpness in pictures, which you can never really determine for someone else. Yep. Can't really figure that out through someone else's pictures. You can figure it out through your own pictures and what you're used to with your lens versus what it is with the teleconverter. Yeah, because you can be looking at someone else's pictures and they just happen to be really out of focus because they just suck at focusing. Or they're really, I mean, to you they're really sharp, but normally they're even sharper because they're shooting a 300 millimeter 2.8 or something. That's yeah. ridiculous. I want a 400 millimeter 2.8 really bad. Someone even make one of those? Oh my God, they're the best lens ever made. They're Nikkor? Yeah. Okay. It's sixty four hundred dollars and sixty five hundred dollars. Rent one. Canon makes one too. Canon has one. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't look at it. They're expensive that big. to rent. Never mind anything else. Oh, I was looking at the new Hasselblad. You can rent the new um, Hasselblad body with a Phase One IQ eighty, the eighty megapixel. Yep. It's um, fifty eight hundred dollars a week. Yeah. Did, did you look at the uh, paperwork you have to submit in order to be eligible to rent it? Oh, I'm sure. You have to give them your PPA membership card, and your third-party insurance beyond PPA in order to, before they will even consider Is that lens rent rentals it. or borrow lenses? That was borrow lenses. Okay. And they're the most lax of everybody. Yeah. You want to rent from like ARC, Adorama, Adorama Rental, who has an even bigger selection than borrow lenses, if you can believe that, because borrow lenses has pretty much everything. Um, they require the third-party insurance flat out. They don't, they don't even take the PPA insurance, and they don't just let you put it on your credit card. I like borrow lenses. Yeah, no, I'm very happy with them. I can't wait to do more business with them. It's one of those you can't do very often, you know? No, you can't live and die by it. Yeah. But I would love to kind of rent some of the exotic stuff once in a while. If I ever do anything near Boston especially, I'm sure I'll pick something up weird just to do it for the day. Look at D4. D4 is not super expensive. I'd pick up a D4 for a wedding. Yeah. we will put 50 bucks out, 75 bucks for a day or two. And that's the best thing, at least with borrow lenses. You can tell them, you know, I want it for. I think the minimum is two days. Yeah, but you can Let tell you do them it for a day. Can you do it just yeah. a day? Yep. Oh, re rent one day, return the next. I think that's what it means. Yeah, because three days. Because I did it three days to get it back Monday. That's what it was. Because oh, I was yeah. originally going to stay up there th through Monday, and then I ended up getting a gig Monday night, so I came home early. It's nice having the option a lot of times to try out some more exotic stuff they may not need. If you need it. You should really be working around it, you know? Yeah. It's one thing to be a stepping stone, but it is money you're spending to rent things that if you need them all the time, you should really be buying. I'm in kind of the same boat, although I've been in that boat since the very beginning. Although I have no problem renting something that I will eventually need uh, to rent it once. But if I'm going to rent it more than once, maybe twice, it depends on how often I have to use it. I won't. So I need the ne my next piece of glass is a macro lens, I think. 100 millimeter 2.8 macro, nice sharp prime lens for portraits, nice macro lens for products, all that kind of stuff. They're about $900. I don't think I would spend even $50 to rent it for any length of time. Because if I'm going to spend $50 to rent it, I'm absolutely just going to start. I need to get the money out to buy it. Well, see, what I figure is renting once or twice, I can rent once and basically put most of that money towards buying it the next time. Because whatever I was going to make with it that I needed to buy it for, I can rent it and put that difference in, and then the second time I can buy it. Or if it's something really ridiculous, like I would, you know, love to have that 85 Prime, I might rent it twice, but each time take the money I put that I had budgeted for that and say, okay, here's I could do a $1,200 job. I need to rent it. It's going to cost me 200, but that thousand goes towards buying it, and the second time that thousand goes towards buying it, and then the third time I can buy it. Because mm. it's less than another thousand. It's not a bad way to look at it. It's that's how I always looked at renting equipment that eventually you're going to need. So, yeah, because if you justify the cost of renting it into your thing and then just say, okay, and I'm going to tack this much on that I need to put towards the next one. That's how I kind of look at it. Yeah, I'm always in the camp of trying to just buy stuff whenever possible. Well, me too. If, 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 and I'm notoriously bad for if the credit's available, I'll just buy it, which actually probably costs me more in the long run. Maybe. Because the rentals, especially, they kind of scale to being expense. So the rentals of something more expensive are definitely more expensive to deal yes. with. But like for me, I'm not going to use a D4S at every event. If I was going to travel, I would 
like say I was traveling somewhere else in the country or even internationally, I would probably rent a D4S for a weekend or yep. a week, really. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning uh, with Patrick a trip to Iceland next summer. We're going to go spend like five days in Iceland just touring around. Because it sounds like fun and I never don't have any stamps in my passport, so I want to get, one, get some. And uh, I will probably rent a 1DX for that trip. You don't need a 1DX for Iceland. I don't, but... You no, 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 no. It's like legitimately, it's not better. There's not! I just wanted to write why. What are you going to shoot at 12 frames a second at fucking Iceland? What, a fu fucking puffin's going to come out of nowhere and just like I fly so. all about? I, I hope so. You can shoot it at 6, because that's all you need to shoot even puffins at. <laughs> but I can only go 4.5. Because yeah. you don't gain megapixels. You're not gaining much sharpness. I gain megapixels. What, 2? Uh, I know, I go 18 to 24. What's 18? that? That's 18. Oh, I forgot that was sub-20. Yeah. Oh, I thought they were always the same. No. That's 18. Oh, okay. So I go to 24 if I get a 1 Okay. I got 50% more pixels. You could double it. 36. Go, Ooh. I can go up to a D800. 810. I'll get a D810. That's your landscape thing. You know how fucking nice landscapes are on that thing? Oh, I bet. All right, maybe I'll rent a D810 when I go out there. <laughs> Take the D810 and you can borrow the 2470. You have fucking fun. I, it's, that camera is so good. I love... The D800 feels so funny when shooting in a studio with it. <laughs> because I have single frame... I was shooting a map. It's a World War One trench map from uh, Versailles. And I took a single frame, which I think is hilarious, because it crashes chrome. No, 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 the stitch. So I took a, a two-frame... Yep. A two-frame stitch of, like, the section of the map I wanted at 36 megapixels, and you can't open it in Chrome, even to this day, because Chrome doesn't see it. It just doesn't open it because it's so big. So you, you can open it, save it, just don't try and, like, view it in another tab or something, because it just crashes the browser. It's really funny. <laughs> um, but you can see so much detail in it. It's unbelievable. It's so sharp. All right. But, well, before we go rambling for too, too long here, uh, I did say this was a conversation, and I want to make it a conversation, so we do have one really obnoxious question, and I want your answer to it. I'm waiting for some sort what? of reaction. Would you rather fight one horse-sized duck Fuck or you. 100 duck-sized horses? <laughs> we talked about this. <laughs> Kova told me about this, because it was funny. <laughs> So the question more clearly is, would you rather fight one duck-sized horse or a hundred horse-sized ducks? Or is it the other way around? No, the other way around. One, one duck-sized... One horse-sized duck. One, yeah, one horse-sized duck. Or a hundred duck-sized duck horses. horses. So, they're, so the two people I was having the conversation with, their answer was obviously the hundred duck-sized horses because a horse-sized duck is a mean fucking thing. <laughs> but, I don't know. I feel like a, a, a large number of horses would be a problem. I would be afraid of a stampede. Yeah. I mean, they I are, would take, I mean, they I would are take small. The one, I, yeah. You know what else is small? Fire ants. Yeah. So. They're, they're horses, though. They're not, like, poisonous. No, but they got teeth and they chomp. Yeah. People forget the horses can chomp. Yeah, that was kind of. My I, I will take too. the one horse-sized duck. I feel like on land you could outrun a horse-sized duck. That's exactly what I'm thinking. So that that would be my answer too. Would be the. We'll take the duck. one horse-sized duck. You're fucking welcome. There you go. So we and answered your question, note. and 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 uh, so like, like I said, this is this is supposed to be a conversation. We want this to go two ways. Wednesday is our big two-way day. Uh, I found out that I can't call the episode the two-way because that's already a thing on NPR. What day is the three-way day? That's Friday, but we never have managed to record a Friday episode. Okay. I should be here on Fridays more often. You should be here on Fridays more often and not go camping. You missed out last week. I didn't even record it. It, was, it, it just, it just kind of happened. That's generally the way with three ways. Yeah. All right. All right. I think that's an episode. That's an episode. We'll see you tomorrow.